my studio. I have a very special show today. It's our special Labor Day holiday show. It actually, our talk and the art experience has the full hour. Uh, Anthony Merlino from the Anthony Merlino Show, as well as the South Florida Business Today Show. Unfortunately, our host will not be able to make it today. He is out of town, so you have me for the rest of the hour, you lucky guys. With that said, I have a special guest to begin our show. Um, he is the CEO and president of one of the largest youth agencies known as the Spear of Florida. Welcome, George Cabrera. Welcome. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm very honored to be here with you, Susanna. I'm super happy to have you. This was a long-awaited interview. I mean, I have followed you. I've had the personal testimonial to witness uh, the growth of Aspira. I'm a Puerto Rican from the Bronx. Uh, I think all my listeners know that by now. And I've always heard uh, some of my family went to Aspira. And it's funny how sometimes uh, uh, myths or certain uh, things are followed by an organization. Back then, Aspira empowered inner city children and only Puerto Ricans when it started. You're going to help us uh, define that. And I was like, oh, my cousin went to Aspira. I want to go to Aspira. And I couldn't go. Make a long story short, it's been very dear to my heart. Here we go, fast forward a uh, couple of decades. I'm not going to say how many. And I get to meet you at a board meeting. And it was, you know, I'm still not with that board anymore, but one of the most positive things that came out of it was meeting George Cabrera, the CEO and president of Aspira, Florida. Tell us, you were appointed to this post in 2012, I believe. Yes. And tell us a little bit about, excuse me, how you um, became appointed, because I know that you have the unique professional skill that a lot of presidents should have and don't have, which is being a CFO, oh, a chief financial officer at a company. So when that post became available, please tell us the story because you could tell it better than I can. Well, thank you. Uh, yes, I was uh, uh, promoted to president CEO last year, uh, January of last year. Uh, by our board of directors and prior to that I was with the organization for over eight years as their chief financial officer so really the the the, the important factor of my responsibility was really making sure that the organization had its financial uh, maintained its financial stability and also at the same time looking at the growth factor where where were we going to go uh, as an organization it's it's pretty interesting because um, uh, when you say the word nonprofit organization, a lot of people think that um, you know it's it's uh, a type of industry that is very it's not as important as when you're in for profit. And I always say uh, I'm not for profit, but not for loss either. So you know my my job was really to make sure that uh, financially uh, we were stable and also looking at the projections as to where we were going to go as an organization. And um, with that, you know, our, our board at the time, uh, when they had to make the difficult decision, because we've had, uh, prior to that, we had our president and CEO that was with us for over 25 years. And he had a, uh, became very, very ill and passed away. So uh, when we were looking at, when the board had to look at who would be the, the person to pretty much take over and continue with this, with this wonderful organization, uh, you know, there were a lot of good factors. Uh, well, one, that I'm very hardworking. Uh, and the second thing is that I worked very closely with the prior CEO. Uh, you know, him and I were very close, and I learned a lot from him. And uh, to, to continue with the legacy, I, and that's how they uh, made that decision. Now, that position was uh, an open post, mm -hmm. and it was publicized, mm -hmm. and many people did interview. And I'm happy that the board of directors... Uh, looked internally, uh, which probably would have been my first call, but it was nice to know that after they interviewed so many people who probably applied, uh, but few that really can fit those shoes, I mean, securing a national $7.5 million market tax credit loan uh, to renovate and purchase charter school properties, I mean, actually creating equity funding, um, 
You also were invited by the Congress uh, to present your charter school project and how it impacted the community. Uh, you also got a $4.7 million loan to construct and renovate charter schools in 2009. And then on top of that, you come back and you do an $8.4 million market tax credit loan to purchase, renovate a charter school, and create an additional $3.2 million in equity funding. I think those are good prerequisites for a president. Jeez, thank you. I no, mean, that's amazing. That, uh, thank you. No, it's the support of the entire staff of the organization as well. But, uh, you know, it, it really is looking into our students. Our youth is very important to us, and that's what makes this organization so important, and that's why we've been around for over 56 years as a national movement. I mean, we didn't start yesterday. And over 36 years in Florida. And the idea is, is to provide each one of our students the best possible educational experience. And I think uh, I'm a strong believer that it all begins with facility. It all begins with creating the environment, creating the atmosphere so the students can actually, um, you know, work hard and have a, a pleasant environment for them to succeed. You know, a lot, a lot of our students today really don't come from the best situations, don't come from, you know, households, split households. So, you know, they... they they come to our school and that is really their second home and so we want to make it as comfortable for them as possible so for for me to go out there and and to look for funds and to look for monies to be able to make our facilities top-notch is is very important to me and and uh, you know and I will continue to do that I gotta tell you I, I'm just so proud uh, you know Miami is such a vibrant city and such a magical city and definitely is you know one of the top cities uh, especially with the international Hispanic. I mean, I think it's 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 number one. I mean, I know there's New York, there's L.A., but I got to tell you, uh, I love Miami. Uh, I love to see and bring people on my show that really empower and have the vision to pave the future for our youth because I believe everything we do today, we have to make a better tomorrow for the tomorrow's children, our children, they're all our children, and Aspira does take that to heart. You know, being one of the largest youth agencies in the United States, I mean, your national uh, national schools, I know just Aspira, Florida, how many schools do you have just in Aspira, Florida here, Miami-Dade, mm -hmm. to say, and then uh, Broward and Palm Beach? Well, in Miami-Dade, uh, we have a combination. We have uh, three of our charter schools uh, where we have middle, six through eight, and actually we are going uh, K through eight uh, next school year. Um, and uh, we have one in Homestead, we have one in the Wynwood area by the Design District, and then we have another one in North Miami. However, we, all, we also have youth leadership programs that we service in the Tri-County area, and we have over, we're in 45 different schools in the three counties where we have uh, youth programs and mentorship programs and advocacy programs with uh, our students, whether it's middle, elementary, high school. Um, we are very proud that we have an early childhood uh, program in our Palm Beach County where we deal with the Birth to Five initiative with our with the children there. Wow. So right now we're really, we're all over the place. Well, you certainly are. I have to tell you, you know, I read your CVC uh, this morning, I know you personally. I've seen you working. I've seen you in action in board meetings. I was very proud to be invited uh, to your school uh, welcome back a meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you had like a staff of 250, Just more or less, mm -hmm. about. And when I walked into that auditorium on North Miami Beach, I did not see the Aspira I remember when I was growing up, that's for sure. What a top-notch facility, gorgeous building, gorgeous landscaping, you know. And on top of it, when I walked in that room and I saw all these round tops and I saw all these teachers and everybody that is from all the different, from the schools here in Homestead, uh, Wynwood, Broward County, come together, when you took that mic, I was able to sit and look as an outsider in. And I can tell you, every eye in that room shined. It beamed. It didn't shine. It beamed. And that says a lot about a leader. I have been in a lot of meetings and auditoriums and forums and boards where when the Speaker of the House or the President gets up, you could see some people going, oh, man, him again? Or, like, you could see their look of frustration or just, like, depressed another year again under this leadership. But in that room, I literally saw 
beaming eyes. And that told me about the leadership you run. You tell me, like my mom used to say, you know, you tell me, uh, uh, oh, there's a very famous one, you know, who follows the pack. I'll tell you who your friends okay, are. Looking at this, looking at this. Right, right, exactly. Tell me who you walk with, I'll tell you who you are. And that's an amazing thing for being that type of mentor to the children and the people that teach those children. It really comes down. Now, it's 56 years old. I, in 1993, bought a home. My parents thought I had a nervous breakdown. I was the first person to buy in what we call the design district, back trendy and chic today. Um, back in 1924, when it was built, it was trendy and chic too. But we know the housing uh, recession and also the Mariel boat. Anybody with money in Miami who didn't understand what was going on got up and left, leaving all that area uh, depleted and a ghost town. But you did it. Aspira chose that to be its pioneer school in Miami. Yeah, absolutely. And what was very interesting is that we've been servicing that area for over 36 years. And uh, I remember, uh, you know, when I, when I came into the organization and listening to the stories and reading the articles, and if you actually walk into our office, we have a museum full of information of just, you know, that era where you couldn't cross the street, where the corner of North Miami Avenue and 36th Street was considered smash and grab. Uh, where if you literally st stood there uh, during a uh, with uh, right, waiting to cross the street, you would literally, um, you know, get robbed. That's how bad it was. And uh, it was interesting. We never left. Uh, we did a lot of gang prevention there. I mean, that was really the the primary um, concern of ours is to really to control the the gang situation that was going on in those areas and also in Miami Beach as well. Uh, and once we tackled that, we started to see that it started to change. Uh, what was very interesting is one of a, one of the major developers in the area that owns quite a bit of what's now called the design district. When we were getting ready to um, to purchase our facility and move into our facility over on Nineteenth Street, uh, he's you know we had a meeting and uh, and we we were vacating one of the other properties, and um, I turned to him and I said, well you know now it's time for you to say thank you. And he goes, thank you, for what? And I go, well, you know, if it wasn't for our organization here in the design district that we really cleaned up the streets, you wouldn't be calling this a design district, and you wouldn't have all these beautiful shops and areas here where you can actually walk at night now. Uh, it took us uh, a while, but we were the ones that really stood here, and we really fixed it up. Absolutely. That's why I brought that to light, because I remember coming off the North Miami Exit 4, uh, you know, just before you get to the 175, the Julia Tuttle, and I would get off North Miami, and I would always see your school, and it was very well noticeable because you had murals on your school. Oh, yes. And so way before the Robins and the Lombardis, well, more Lombardis and the Goldmans and the primary project flights, uh, you had your kids, you know, painting their heritage on the walls, and I remember always seeing it and saying, wow, that, that looks really neat. And then, of course, I would see the Espina, and it would bring me to think of my childhood. Well, I was saying something before, and I didn't get to finish. When I was trying to read some of the historical points I didn't want to miss for my radio show, you should really be like 86 years old. <laughs> because, <laughs> I feel it sometimes. So. <laughs> because you are really, I mean, you've accomplished so much. And who, I mean, I know they can't see you. Of course, they're going to go to my Facebook.com slash Art Talk by Susanna Baker because we film every radio show and they're going to be able to see you live and hopefully like us too. But you're gonna, they're going to see a very young man. You're in your 30s. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's, that's an amazing accomplishment. I mean, you're smart as, uh, you know, as wit and, and, and strong as bull because to take on this organization, you have to have a lot of strength and leadership skills, but you also have such unique professional qualities. I mean, you love art, you love music. One of your biggest passion and fundraising is also creating concerts, uh, drum, uh, rum tasting, cigar and wine. I mean, this is like so thinking out of the box, which obviously, you know, plugs right into my soul because that's what I'm all about is thinking out of the box. A lot of people think because 
its philanthropy or because it's a corporation that was ran so many decades this way, that's the way it should continue to run. And it's young people with the strengths that you have because you showed them. And by showing them in black and white, also open doors now to, to, to apply some of these great artistic, cultural qualities that you have to make organizations that are 56 years old to maybe now say, wow, you know, we got to listen to this guy. You know, it's like Tony Goldman when he said, you know, I lean forward. Guess where you're going to shoot your next, uh, uh, you know, swimwear magazine? And she goes, where? And he says, Miami Beach. That was in, in 90, 89, 90. And she said, are you crazy? I'm going to go to Cocaine Cowboys. And no way. But she listened. She did it because she knew he did so. Mm -hmm. And she knew she was talking to a visionary. You're the same way. You're doing the same thing to this school. You're paving the future for creative thinkers and artists, I hear now. I hear you just, and congratulations, you purchased for the school. I don't do no more renting. Your philosophy was no more renting. Enough is enough. We're going to claim it our own. And you went. And you, without everyone, everybody saying, ah, he's not going to do it, or Winwood, not Winwood. And you went, and you went to probably, I don't know if you knew it, the most international, iconic place in the art scene in the world, Winwood. Yes, yes, uh, we're very excited. Last year we had purchased, I want to say it's the last piece of property or piece of land on a main avenue in the design district. I think there's nothing else available uh, in Wynwood, in the Wynwood area. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. And now uh, we are, we went to, our plans were to renovate the actual facility, uh, which was a very big building there. Uh, 60,000 square feet, we have a, an actual, our charter school has been there for over 13 years um, in the area, but in that specific area, 10 years. And when we purchased it, we went in and said, okay, we're going to renovate this and make it a really nice place. But we realized that, you know what, our students do deserve more. And uh, the community and the whole area that it's going through this whole beautiful renovation, because I think as, a, as, as, a, as an area, as a city, I mean, it's just, it's looking beautiful. So we're, we said, you know, now is the time to actually make the decision and say, we're going to knock this baby down and we're going to build a brand new facility for our students. And, um, and we are. Uh, we're breaking ground this year. We're breaking ground hopefully by the end of the year. And the actual new facility will be ready by next school year. So by next August, our, all of our students in the area will be walking into a brand new state-of-the-art facility with a media lab, um, with all with an art wing, uh, you know, with all these different components. As a matter of fact, uh, last year, um, in, in uniting in our vision, the University of Miami, the School Frost of Music, this is the second year in a row already that they sponsor an after-school program, which is a full-fledged music program in that school. Um, not only in this school, but also in our North Miami school, because they it. see the strong uh, component that we're having in the arts and in music, uh, because that's what really, I believe, um, maintains our kids, you know, um, in a, you know, in, away from trouble, uh, keeps them very busy, and actually you can see uh, that that actually shed some light into their future. I have to tell you, our talk listeners and the biz listeners, you know, there's a lot of financial people listening to our show today. I know everybody's waiting for the Bloomberg report and all the great stuff in financing, and we're the entertainment section, Art Talk by Susanna Baker. I got to tell you, you need to go and look at, um, you know, contact uh, G Cabrera, C A B R E R A, at florida.aspira.org. Um, is there any other website uh, that they can see more? I know that was your personal, I should ask you if that was okay. That's okay. But I got to tell you, if you want to donate, if you want to empower a certain organization that has the history, there's so many people coming up with uh, nonprofits now. It, it seems to be the in thing or being a foundation or being stuff. I mean, you have... 56 years in the making, you're not going anywhere, you're empowering alone in South Florida, 3,500 plus children, 85,000 nationwide, that's 85,000 children 
nationwide where you are making them and paving the future for aspirants, aspirants, that's what they're called, aspirantes. And, you know, aspira means to aspire, inspire, uh, really uh, foster creativity with your new school in Wynwood. I am honored to say that we're going to be hands-on helping to achieve the goals and introductions to foster a new art school, Aspira Arts, hopefully. I mean, that will be something to, to keep our audience um, aware of and up-to-date with information. Um, but I'm excited with all the great projects that are coming through, uh, especially Wynwood. I think that the private community needs to get involved also. We got such an array of 100 galleries, three of the most biggest collectors in the world out of the top 50 in the world art collectors. We have three in Miami, actually four with Loria, and probably a few more that would say, hey, I'm me too. But, you know, known internationally, Margulies, Dela Cruz, and Rubel, and now the Marlins Park, which holds one of the best art collections by Loria. I have to tell you, they got to come and empower schools like you, doing what you're planning to do with your new school. And it's true, you know, when I was in high school, you know, there was no direct programs of leadership, really. I mean, it's expect, except for Aspita. Aspita was the one that if you were going the wayside, if you were confused, if you were a troubled child, that was what was um, the stereotype that still follows the spirit, but that is not the case. It's not anymore just Puerto Ricans. It's not anymore just Hispanics. Can you tell us what is the percentage in your school? Sure. Well, we, we uh, and just to give it a little bit of history, the uh, Aspira back in, in New York in the 50s was put together by a Puerto Rican group that was really trying to look at how to look at the areas and, and, and look at the Puerto Rican youth and trying to get them to go to college and give them that mentorship. Um, and that guidance. And years later, it turned out to such a strong organization that now we service all. Uh, we service everyone. We have a very, um, you know, 54% of our students today, let's say in Florida, are from different, different Hispanic backgrounds. We have Haitian Americans, African Americans. I mean, we've pretty much taken all because we believe that all of our students need, whoever needs the help, that's what we're here. We're really an organization for the community. And we service all, and that's what we're very proud of. So right now, you know, if you look at the demographics of our schools, um, you see all different types of faces and backgrounds, and it's really, really a beautiful thing to be able to experience all these different cultures that are in our organization. Well, you're definitely um, intimately aware, being you know a son of a Cuban son of Cuban immigrants that came here, and so your plight with uh, with a community and struggling and 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 and, and getting. Uh, as knowing who you are in a brand new uh, uh, country, state. I mean, you've seen your parents go through it and achieve. They did an excellent job with uh, George Cabrera, that's for sure. Uh, kudos to your parents. Um, you know, over the years, you've engaged so many local community leaders. You've formed partnerships uh, with other, like you were saying, with the Frost uh, music and, and other partnerships. I also have seen you very politically, just like you were invited by Congress. You have really taken the voice to heart, not just of Aspira, but young youth uh, of all backgrounds, of all nationalities, as global as Miami is. You have taken the plight, the plight and the voice to Congress, to your co political leaders here in, in Miami, to really come back and help. And with all these budget cuts, you're growing. Yes, uh, it's been uh, challenging because all of us as nonprofits have been, well, even for profits too. I think it's just been an, a, a challenging era that we've all gone through. Um, but for me, you know, yes, I was born here in the United States and came from uh, my my uh, my family came from from Cuba and I was born here. But just because I was born here, I still went through all the through a lot of the struggles of trying to make it in this country. Which uh, you know, when you have language barriers, when you have a lot of things that. Are, are not for you and and you know it's it's a struggle of course back then you didn't have the internet where you can google things uh, you didn't have a cell phone so a lot a lot of the 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 you know a lot of the struggles that our fam my family went through I lived through it I was uh, I remember you know being five years old and my grandparents not speaking English and I had to go with them to doctor's appointments to translate for them and I was five because I already knew how to speak English and Spanish so you can see you know my grandparents never drove in this country you know there were a lot of things that prevented me from doing a lot of things and obviously as the older I got 
um, I was able to come back and say, well, wait a minute, no, this is a, a country that we do have opportunities. I remember when I was 19 years old, I, uh, you know, purchased the first home for my grandparents because they never owned a home here because they were scared to because they came with that whole, um, you know, that, that, that pain from Cuba saying, oh my gosh, if I buy something here, I'm afraid that somebody's going to take it away from, them, from, from me. So, you know, at the age of 19, I said, no, you need to own a home. You need to experience what it is. And that's when they purchased their first home uh, was, uh, was because I, I told them to. So, you know, I went through a lot. Uh, you know, I was given, uh, they worked very hard to give me everything that I have. Um, and they did a great job, but yes, there were we. I went. We went through a lot of struggles. Didn't know what the struggles were in Cuba, but I do know what the struggles were here in the states. That's for sure. Well, I got to tell you, you did an amazing job. You've been absolutely incredible. Um, you know uh, what you're doing with Aspira Florida. I commend you. If uh, I just mentioned your website, but can you mention to some of our audience that might want to donate, help, or just find out about your new sure. Aspira Art School? Uh, how can they reach out to you? Well, they can uh, send me an email. It's gcabrera uh, at fl.aspira.org, or they can log on to our website at www.aspirafl.org. Uh, our phone number is 305-269-6767. And again, my name is George Cabrera, and uh, Aspira, you know, our Aspira schools are not for Aspira. They're for the community, so, so it's for everyone. So we invite you to please come by and Take a look at our facilities and give us a call and we'll see how we can fit you in so we, you can be a part of our family.